Live from Coronado, it's Wednesday afternoon, featuring the almost ready for prime time Coronado Rotary Club. Today's special guests will be District 5340, Downtown Rotary Club 33, and our distinguished special speaker, Rear Admiral Terry Kraft of the USS Midway Museum. Hey. We're so almost ready for prime time, we're starting eight minutes early to fit it all in today. Wow. All right, and we'll start with Jessica Cunningham with the invocation and pledge. Hello. Um, it is good to recognize how different we are. Our talents, our dreams, our backgrounds, our occupations. And it is also good to know that when you created each of us, you broke the mold. No one is exactly like anyone else. Even our thumbprints and our voice track tell us how unique we are. Yet we thank you that we can take these differences and organize them for the good of Rotary and our community. In our differences, we can think the same thoughts and move together toward a common goal. Bless us as we meet together. Thank you for our, our individuality and also for our common bond. Amen. Amen. And now join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. and guests, past president Dan Orr. All right. Besides our guests over here, who we'll are going to introduce later, we had two of the founders, special guests, including our old pal in public safety fire from Marble Falls, Texas, a former member of our club, Jim Gallagher. Thank you. Thank you. And winning the pilgrimage award. <laughs> Day, a lawyer from the Lugano Basel Club in Switzerland, Don Becker. <laughs> now, yes, the Rotarians, my left, your right, starting. <laughs> President of the fellow Rotarians and guests. So it is really my honor, first of all, to introduce our district governor, Don Phipps, with us today. So this is like the second of the fellow Then we have from the San Diego Rotary Club, which is we know as Club 33, their president, Michael Brunker, is visiting us today. And then also from the San Diego Club, their past president, David Oates. Okay. Oh, President Bob, fellow Rotarians and guests, <clears throat> I have the honor and privilege of having Susan's cousins here, Margaret Carr from Thousand Oaks and Jeff Carr, her son from Silver Lake. Now, today's a special day, March 13th. Someone of these people is having a birthday today. Oh, it's Margaret. <laughs> so I don't want to tell her age, but if you had a hundred and took off nine, you'd have a good idea. <laughs> I don't tell women dates. <laughs> one, one other thing, of course, my beautiful wife, Susan, but where is she? If she's here, I know she's here. Where's Francis McCarty? Francis, are you here somewhere? Where are you? Okay. Yeah, we're so happy to have Francis. She is a returning. Rotarian and will be re-inducted here in a couple of weeks. So, so thank you. Hey, President Bob, fellow Rotarians. I'd also like to introduce uh, one of our guests here also, uh, James Morrison, who is the uh, District All Air Society Coordinator. Ride the point. 
I forgot one more. My special guest, Marty Tree. Marty's here somewhere, and he's going to be inducted soon, also. There he is, way in the back. <laughs> Okay. Fellow Rotarians, it's again my pleasure to reintroduce and welcome my wife, Holly. <laughs> Is any more Jerry talking with the guests? <laughs> well, with 102 in attendance today, wow, their record. Uh, John from Switzerland, we can do this uh, flag swap real quick. Oh, like, like, oh, we have another one more guest. Let me make sure. As President Dan Orr missed one. Please go. <laughs> no, I'm just really bad at flagging down the microphone. <laughs> I'd like a slingshot next time. <laughs> so, President Bob, fellow Rotarians, um, at last I have dragged my better half, and it's not Sully. Um, this is my husband, Dan Siegenthaler, joining us today. <laughs> okay. Now we will do an international banner slot. God, I'm so true. Okay, we're going to save red badgers to the very end if we have time, and we're going to go to updates and announcements. Okay, quickly, we uh, get your golf clubs out, get them cleaned up and uh, ready to uh, stay safe. And I'll be out there. So um, if you're smart, you won't be anywhere near where I'm teeing up. <laughs> the director's meeting is on the 19th, Tuesday. And if you're a Red Badger, I've got a couple already signed up. It's a great way to check that one off. Please come and see how sausage is made. We have an alternate meeting scheduled for March 28th. Uh, we have a little bit of a speaker change on that. It was going to be Terry, but I think we're going to move her over to April. And we'll have it. A, a different speaker, TBA. Next slide. Uh, Jerry Winter's Celebration of Life, uh, 24th of uh, March. Uh, we'd ask that you'd RSVP uh, earlier this week. If you haven't done that, you still want to go, uh, give uh, uh, the Cybersons a call and uh, see if that's okay. I'm sure it will work out. But uh, please come on, or Jerry. Next slide. All right. Bob Watson Citizenship Award. Thanks to Daniel Stewart for always honoring that. It's a great uh, testament to people in our community who are not uh, Rotarians, but have done really wonderful service above self uh, things in our community worthy of recognition. If you know of somebody like this, uh, uh, or if you don't, please give it some thought and see if you can come up with somebody and pass that name to, to Daniel Stewart. Next slide. Around town, we have uh, done a lot in the way of uh, food. Uh, next, there we go. Uh, food collecting. We had a real nice uh, letter there from the food bank down in Imperial Beach, and there's some of our fine uh, volunteer Rotarians uh, participating in that event. And it's, uh, it's really, it's really important, and it, and it makes a difference. So, thank you to all that are involved with that. Speaking of which, next slide. You know, we have this monthly uh, social every uh, month, and uh, we usually pick a, a staple of the month to collect. And we did uh, we did really well here at uh, at John Duncan's place uh, last week. And that's uh, just one shot of the hall. Speaking of John Duncan's uh, party last week, can we go to the next slide? Well, I could put three or four more slides up here of uh, merrymaking. <laughs> Uh, Rotarians at, that, at this social last week. It was uh, it was a big hit. Thank you, John, for hosting that. And for those that were needing to, you know, up their vitamin D a little bit, next slide. We had a really great turnout there for the beach cleanup that we do every month. We especially had uh, a good turnout of the uh, Interact, nine of those. Folks. So, Good time had by all, and it's a great way to go. Remember that we are a beach town. 
All right, next slide. So, how many went to the uh, the semifinal? Wasn't that great? I I was in Portland on a ski slope somewhere north of here, but I will let's turn that mic over to Mary real quick. There she is. Okay. 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 I'll just take it. I'll just take it. I'm not going to talk long because we are on a short time leash. But I just want to say it was a great success. Um, and 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 I'd like to also say thank you so much to Janice Lowenberg for no, taking no. these pictures. The speaker. Okay. Yeah, move away from the speaker. And, and, there you go. Right there. Okay. <laughs> and thank you to everybody who attended. We had over 50 people. We will have the North Regionals next Tuesday night in Carlsbad. You should have come when it was in Coronado. <laughs> but uh, come Tuesday, and then we'll have those finals, and I'm gonna say a lot more about that when we're not on such a good. Because I'm about to play music like they do in the Oscars. Yeah, exactly. And also, thank you to Don Phipps' wife, Donna, who is a calligrapher. Woo! She uh, she engraved all of our all of my um certificates. So thank you all. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, while we were uh, dutifully doing rotary <laughs> business here, uh, our, our past president, Dan Stewart, Daniel Stewart, was uh, uh, keeping their seat warm in the uh, congressional gallery there. Anybody that didn't know that, this is the press release from Scott Peters. Now, let's have a little fun. Next slide. <laughs> Instead of find Waldo, how about find Dan? <laughs> I will be. I'll, I'll bestow a, a a matching Paul Harris fellowship for anybody that can can find Dan. <laughs> All right. Next slide. He, he, that's where he. All right. If we can get a mic over to a non Rotarian announcement uh, from Mike Wyber. Okay. President Bob, Rotarians, and guests, why are these sailors so happy? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because they are being hosted to a formal dinner and dancing at the Hotel Del Coronado. And that's a treat that most active duty couples can't afford. The Coronado Chamber of Commerce is holding our annual Salute to the Military Ball on Saturday, April 6th at the Hotel Del Coronado. A number of Rotarians, some in this room, have already sponsored tables and the bar. Midway is a sponsor. At this event, we'll present awards named for Jim and Sybil Stockdale, Harry Jenkins, and Ed Martin. You too can host such couples and you can join in the revelry. For example, for a $1,000 sponsorship, you'd get two tickets to the ball and you'd also enable us to host another military couple. And yes, you can buy individual tickets. And if you're a veteran, many of you are, you can call for sponsored veteran tickets. We have a limited number of those. So please consider sponsoring and joining us on April 6th at the Hotel Del Coronado and if you would like to be engaged in this as a sponsorship, please let me know or call the Rotary, the Chamber office and talk to Rena. Thank you. I hope to see you there. Well, thank, thank you, Michael. And, uh, and, and in the spirit of the four-way test, is it the truth? How many minutes did you speak for that number? Term? Probably two, but I'm happy to pay for it. Well, very good. $25 <laughs> a, a minute. That's a, thank you. That would be $100 to our endowment fund. And that, uh, you come back and talk to us again. <laughs> we'll welcome that. Okay. Well, I'm going to turn over to, uh, to Sharon Raffer and uh, District Governor Don. Uh, and Michael Brunker, uh, who will talk, and Lou Ann's going to be part of this too. And we're, this is a really special day to award uh, the Peacemaker of the Year Award, which is something that we do here. So over to you guys. Here it goes. 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 Peace Project Sioux annually presents a Peacemaker Award to an individual or group whose service promotes good development. Take it in your hand. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Uh, Coronado Rodriguez Peace Projects Committee annual and present the Peacemaker Award to an individual or group whose service promotes goodwill and exemplifies people of action. For this 2023-24 Rotary Year, we are honored to recognize the leadership of Rotarian Dave Oaks, who is a past president of the San Diego Rotary Club, commonly known to us as Club 33. <laughs> he is also presently a district assistant governor. Dave founded and remains active with the Rotary District 5340 Anti-Human Trafficking Tax Act, and he also serves on San Diego County's Anti-Human Trafficking Advisory Council. Dave's determination to increase awareness to the human trafficking epidemic led to his focusing on this issue when he was Club 33 president. And now, immediate past President Nguyen is helping spread the word, and our Coronado Rotary volunteers are participating with vigor in supporting the efforts of Dave in District 5340 by participating in work projects at res residential safe homes to collect new basic supplies for victims of human trafficking and domestic violence, we are each given the opportunity to help make a difference for the group. Isn't that what Rotary is all about? Rotarian asks, how can we help? And then we would have to. Congratulations, Dave. And Dave will tell us some more about this incredible program. <laughs> Um, hi, everybody. Okay, so my classification is public relations, which means I didn't take a speech class in college. I took that you need to shut up now and let somebody else talk. <laughs> but I find myself with a, I think I can count on one hand how many times I've been this nervous speaking to a group because this is uncharacteristic. So bear with me. Um, I know I've got five minutes and I will keep it to five minutes, but I want to acknowledge a couple of folks. First off, thank you so much, Sharon and Loanne, for this kind and humbling award as to all of you, but also to my president, Michael Brunker, by the way, the best president we've ever had at San Diego Rotary. I'm also really happy he's taking over as assistant governor for me next year. <laughs> so that I can go back and be an another member. And and Governor Phipps, thank you so much for being here. Um I also want to thank uh, the Admiral for being here for Midway. Uh, it's the second best aircraft carrier ever in service. First one was my aircraft carrier, USS John C. Stennis, CDM 74. But since that is not in San Diego anymore, <laughs> please go see the Midway. Um, it's a little inside joke. We have the arrivals, right? The last one I want to say thank you to before I tell you about that uh, is a uh, is man that I had the privilege of serving uh, in his tenure as district governor, who also saw the value of this cause. And I know he's a good friend of yours and I know he's watching on Zoom. Dan Gensler, I love you yeah. and thank you for all of you. Um, I am I am a guy who never expected, I guess it's been about 10 years ago now that I would be involved in anti-human trafficking. But the reason I got involved is in my club, we have an annual camp, sort of mirrors Ryla, but we've been putting it in place for 50 years. We call it Camp Enterprise. The idea is we take about 80 high school juniors up to Julian and we teach them about the free enterprise market. We bring them into teams and they develop a business plan. That's all rouge. We tell the guidance counselors, please do not send us your honor students. Send us your students who have something that they need to overcome. Something that they need, a bare personal barrier that's keeping them from realizing their full potential. We don't ask a lot of questions. And in this particular incident in 2016, a young girl at part of the talent show contest the second day who was kept quiet to herself pretty much the entire camp now stood bravely in front of an audience of 80 other high school juniors whom she did not know and 40 other Rotarians and Rotaractors whom she never met and created this speed art if you've ever heard of that type of art in about three minutes and created this plan and the Rotarian who was monitoring and facilitating the stage, gave her the mic, this young woman, and said, you have, so re you have a story you want to tell about how you create speed art. And she bravely said, well, I learned how to do speed art when I was recovering from my last suicide attempt. I'm a human trafficking survivor. Oh. And the room went silent for a second. And then out of the blue, in the middle of the dark night, 
80 students and 40 Rotarians rose to their feet and gave her an applause and showered her with love. I still get emotional about that. And at that point, I couldn't look away. And I started asking questions about how big the scourge was. It's second to the narcotics trade. And I said, I got to do something about that. And San Diego Rotary made the fatal error of asking me to be president. They said, you have a theme. I said, yeah, I think so. In 10 minutes, we raised $50,000 to put in the power of teachers to train them on the spot if one of their students was being groomed for, recruited by, or the victims of human trafficking. And then I started, thanks to the wisdom of Governor Steve Whiteson at the time, the Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force with a bunch of people in the District 5340, we raised another $50,000, put that into teacher training. And we started doing beautification efforts at human trafficking survivor transition homes and other efforts like that to tell those who are in the scourge and those who are recovering from the scourge that they matter, that they're valued, that they're loved, and that they deserve to pursue the life that was taken from them. You have been one of the guideposts for them. You have volunteered to generate hopes cleanup efforts. You have, in fact, there are boxes in Luann's trunk right now that I will take to the Family Justice Center downtown, which will go toward victims of survivors, I should say, of domestic violence and human trafficking. So they have clothes on their backs, not just for them, for their kids. This scourge continues, but I will tell you, thanks to you and others like you, both in Rotary 5340 and elsewhere, we will end the scourge in San Diego, I promise you that. Because the more we are aware and, and understanding of what the scourge is, the more not only can we help survivors, but we can prevent the next victims. I accept this award as thanks to you, and I'm humbled by it. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Michael, Michael, let's make it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to go right into the, the Paul Harris uh, uh, Society uh, Awards, and then from there into Paul Harris Fellows. Thank you, President Bob. The, uh, the Paul Harris Society recognizes individuals who notify Rotary International their intention to contribute a thousand dollars or each for each. Okay, sorry. Hold it. There you go. The uh, Paul Harris Society recognizes individuals who notify Rotary International of their intention to contribute a thousand dollars or more each Rotarian year to the annual fund, the Polio Plus Fund, or an approved global grant. Today we have uh, uh, District Governor Don Fitz and James Morrison, as I introduced earlier, as the District of Paul Harris Society coordinator, coordinator who officially recognized three new members to the Paul Harris Society. Thank you. Heard that last fine. I'm going to run through this in three minutes. It's very <laughs> expensive to go over that. So. <laughs> so uh I really have a 45 minute pitch, and someone said, "No problem. You can start at two o'clock." <laughs> so, thanks, Dave, for doing that uh, uh, brief introduction to the Paul Harris Society. In fact, it is. It is a pledge once a year to uh, pledge a thousand dollars, but you, it's not committed. People aren't going to come. The Rotary police aren't going to go after you. Right? Don, yep. like, uh, Don agrees with that. So we're going to have Rotary police. It started 25 years ago with a, a past district governor, Wayne Cusick, from the Rotary Club of Life. 55 members signed up that year. I've been reading the numbers on the foundation. My guess, they all came from this flow. <laughs> so 
fast forward today, we have 30,000 Paul Harris Society members in 152 countries. In the US, we have 15,000. And this is the interesting part, it's the 80-20 rule. 20% of all the Rotary uh, contributions to the foundation are done by these 2% of Paul Harris Society members. So I'm always excited to be able to induct new members. Uh, quick update on Rotary Foundation. Uh, we pulled in 427 million last year. Uh, we did 1,100 global grants that are grants all over the planet, all funded by the Rotary Foundation. 470 district grants were, were one of those districts that take advantage of that. And we did 324 disaster grants. If you've been in Rotary a long time, you've uh, noticed that we used to put up these disasters one at a time, Syria, flooding, Turkey. There are so many disasters now, we don't put them up. We just put up a fund for disasters. So think about that when you make a contribution. In this district, so everybody knows that a district grant, a global grant is, uh, but, but uh, we, Rotary Foundation matches our district to do projects. And this year we wrote checks for $135,000 to 94 projects just here in the San Diego area. And it was 314,000 for global grants. This is the best part of it. Um, let's see, your fundraiser is the golf tournament. And it's the, and it is, and the other one is the low tide ride. I prefer to ride. I do that every year. So can someone tell me what the annual, not the month, but the annual fundraiser is for the Rotary Foundation? The big event. The event that everybody participates and raises money for. Does anybody have that? I'm going to answer for you. We don't have any. We really don't have any uh, event that we invite people to donate money. It's based on clubs. It's based on Paul Harris Fellows. It's based on people that contribute um, to the Rotary Foundation. So here we go. Here's uh, here's Coronado. It's very interesting. Paul Harris Fellows, 169. That's bigger than my club. Raise your hand if you're a Paul Harris fellow. The Quest Society, 13. Paul Harris Society members are 29. Major donors, 32. Uh, every Rotarian every year is uh, 59 members. I'm just shocked. You so far have pulled the record. Your all-time giving to the Rotary Foundation is $2,748,440. Give yourself applause for that. Well, those who give it, take it away. You also, throughout throughout the time, have spent ninety one thousand dollars in your district grants, and uh, well, your last one here was six thousand for the uh, Lens of Freedom in Ensenada. So give yourself applause for that. So we have three new uh, three new Paul Harris Society members, and actually they're not new. They've been donating to the foundation for years. And they all thought they were Paul Harris Society members. We called them uh, Paul Harris Society members in mind only. <laughs> they never did sign up. So we got them to sign up today. They're strong supporters and could uh, Natalie Bailey, Wayne Strickland, and Douglas St. Dennis. We're going to make the eyes come out of here. So we've got Natalie. Yeah. So yeah, so here you go. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Right here on top. Here you go. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah. And uh Douglas, thank that. Yeah. Yeah. Here's your and here's your um your Chevron. These are uh, uh Chevron MV. I see you've got one right there. <laughs> yeah. And Wayne. Congratulations. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you for continuing to support the Rotary Foundation. Yes, Where are those chevrons in? Yeah. 
or the uh, or next awards uh, are to Paul Harris Fellows. And uh, Paul Harris Fellow recognition is given to anyone who contributes a gift of $1,000 or more cumulatively to the annual fund, the Boy Bus Fund, or an appropriate global grant. Additionally, our club recognizes donations of $250 or more that are made to the golf tournament and or the low tide ride stride. And today we have uh, six awardees that are going to happen. So if you join me here at the podium, uh, first, uh, John Weisbach is receiving his first award, uh, Natalie Bailey, who is receiving her first and second, Karen Lundline, who is receiving her third, Paul Lundline, who is receiving his fourth, Mary Ann Berta, who is receiving her ninth, and Helen Koopa is also receiving her ninth. Yeah. So you get one. Yeah. Okay. Sapphire. Okay. Congratulations. So who else you got? Four boxes. Four boxes. All right. So all right. Well, Helen, there you go. Congratulations. Thank you very much for your three Really Very good. Well, there you go. Very good. Congratulations. Paul. Paul Harris. Brother four. Oh, congratulations. Yep, yep. And Karen, your third. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you for your generous. It's over, yep. Yeah. There you go. Oh, that was good. Congratulations. <laughs> 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 Well, I think we have time to do two more quick awards here. So let's let's do the uh, let's do the end polio now. And if, if we have a couple of really special participants in this, if I can ask Carol Summers and uh, Kit Williams, and I think Jim Kaufman slipped in the polio. Why don't you guys join us up here and participate in this wonderful recognition? So we recognize this club at the governor's dinner with a plaque because these come way much later. And so this certificate of appreciation to the Rotary Club of Coronado is presented a certificate of appreciation for its financial support of in polio now Countdown to the History Campaign. Together, we will fulfill our promise to the children of the world to eradicate polio. This club, last year, on record, $305,107. Congratulations for your work last year. Thank you, guys, and congratulations. That was a lot of hard work, and we couldn't have done it without you. D.G. Don, the last one is uh, this rotary citation that, uh, that you were so kind to send our way, and and the, the person that earned so much of that with the support of this club was past president Luann Miller. <laughs> So each club president is asked to put the goals into uh, my Rotary and Club Central, and then the hard part is actually meeting those. So your your club did. Congratulations! And so you get the presidential award, like Rotary citation for last year. Congratulations! Thank you, Dean and Congratulations, Land. Okay, we are we're getting pretty close to here and about the midway here, but we, we're going to squeeze in two more one minute events. <laughs> Eric Nelson is going to give us a rotary minute, followed by Sarah Colby. <laughs> <laughs> we don't start till you get up here. Don't All right. Thank <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, fellow Rotarians. For my Rotary Minute uh, today, when I became a Red Badger in December, one of the things that uh, really intrigued me was our 
very simple, very powerful motto, service above self. So I decided to do a little bit of research on the history of that. Uh, we actually have two mottos, service above self and one profits most who serves best. In 1911, the second Rotary Convention in Portland, Oregon approved he profits most who serves best as the Rotary motto. The wording was adopted from a speech that Rotarian Arthur Frederick Sheldon delivered in the first convention held in Chicago the previous years. Sheldon declared that, quote, only the science of right conduct toward others pays. Business is the science of human services. He who profits, he profits most who serves his fellow best. The Portland Gathering also inspired the motto, service above self. During an outing on the Columbia River, Ben Collins, president of the Rotary Club of Minneapolis, talked with Seattle Rotarian J.P. Pinkham about the proper way to organize a Rotary Club, offering the principle his club had adopted, service, not self. Pinkham invited Rotary founder Paul Harris, who was also on the trip, to join their conversation. Fast forward to 1950, Rotary International Convention in Detroit, two slogans were formally adopted as the official mottos of Rotary. And finally, in 1989, the Council on Legislation established service above self as the principal motto of Rotary because it best conveys the philosophy of unselfish volunteer service. That, my friends, is the Rotary Minute. Thank you, Eric. All right, Sarah. The challenge has been set. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Hi, everybody. Hello, Rotary. Yeah. First of all, if you left this at the social at John Duncan's, come and get it for me. <laughs> Second of all, again, Paul Harris, in 1911, Paul Harris gave $25 and 44 cents to Chesley Carey to mimeograph a new publication. It went out to 2,000 Rotarians and 23 clubs. It was the National Rotarian. However, England and Canada got in the game, and it couldn't be the National Rotarian anymore. So uh, they changed the name to the Rotarian. Now, what's really cool is as Rotary clubs formed around the world, we couldn't just have one Rotary magazine. And so there are now regional Rotary magazines all over the world. So um, the, there are 30 officially licensed Rotary regional magazines, and they're distributed in more than 130 countries and published in more than 20 languages. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Sarah. Don't leave. Yeah, don't leave. We have to take care of something here. Jean Marie is coming up. To help you be dressed appropriately. <laughs> because you are no longer a red badger. You're out, as we said in the name, you're out of uniform. <laughs> Congratulations. And we're right on time. I'm delighted to turn the mic now over to Tom Miller, who will introduce uh, our guest speaker. President Bob, uh, fellow Rotarians, and honored guests, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Rear Admiral Harry Graff, our guest speaker today. Harry Graff is the president and CEO of the USS Midway. Prior to the Midway, he uh, yeah, held exactly. senior positions, senior vice president of positions of General Autonomous. And then uh, prior to that, had 34 years of service with the Navy. He started that service at age 12 as a naval flight officer, uh, flying a, a variety of tactical aircraft, the A-6, the A-6 Prowler, and the f and 18 He holds the Distinguished Flying Cross Award, has over 40 combat missions, and has survived a thousand carrier landings. Wow. He 
He's held uh, a variety of uh, CO positions with squadrons in the U.S. Navy and has been the skipper of the USS Shreveport and USS Ronald Reagan. Um, after being uh, promoted to flag, he had several CMO positions uh, in the Pentagon, uh, leading various initiatives in naval aviation. He's also been the uh, Enterprise Carrier Strike Group commander, and his last position, um, Commander U.S. Forces Japan. He's, uh, again, um, if I forgot, um, an Academy graduate, has uh, a variety of awards and uh, fellowships with Harvard, MIT, and has a master's from Auburn University. Lori Eagle. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I liked it. Okay. Without any further ado, I'll give you uh, Admiral Craig. Yeah. Thanks, Tom, for that overly long introduction. <laughs> and my Bob thanks you too. So I appreciate that. Um, Thank you, uh, Bob and Tom and everybody for, for coming to my little brief today. I really appreciate it. Thanks to the crack IT team who's got my brief. Hopefully, some of them. Um, last night I gave a talk to a group uh, uh, called the Quiet Birdmen, uh, a, a group of uh, active retired aviators. And after spending an hour at the bar and then going to dinner, I realized there was never a more misnamed group than the Quiet Birdmen. Uh, as Admiral Bennett reminded me, uh, this brief today, I'm going to clean it up from last night or else. And uh, I'm just very happy to talk about my two favorite things myself and the USS Midway. So I love this picture. This is actually not retouched in any way. Um, you know, it's our 20th anniversary this year. And when my predecessor, the one and only Mac McLaughlin, many of you may know him, was in the final throes of trying to convince the city of San Diego and the Coastal Commission. I know you're familiar with the Coastal Commission. Yeah. To make this happen, one of the members said, well, you're going to ruin the skyline. And Max said, we're going to be the skyline. Right? And if you watch uh, the news, thank you. Yeah. If you watch the news broadcasts, I can always look behind who's ever talking and see the midway, make sure the up and over lights are working, uh, or the chief engineer is going to get a call, right? <laughs> that works. Next slide, please. No sweat. Uh, that's not, that doesn't look right at all. But anyway, uh, I'll talk about it a little bit. So that's, uh, that's me on midway. So I did fly 40 combat missions off of the USS Midway uh, back in the day. So I did two deployments on the ship. So for me, uh, this is a bit of a homecoming. Uh, I got to command USS Ronald Reagan here in San Diego, which was fantastic. I got to take the ship on our first two deployments, and it was like uh, taking all these sailors to Christmas for the first time. 70% of our crew, when I took over Reagan here in California, had never done a six-month deployment. And I didn't really figure that out until I was talking to a sailor in the gym, and I said, hey, are you ready for deployment? He looked at me and said, Sir, six months is forever. <laughs> when you're 18 years old, six months does seem like forever. But it was such a great experience to lead this great crew uh, here on Reagan um, for deployment and then come back to Coronado. Uh, the picture below is myself and my dad. He was an A-7 pilot, uh, served in the Navy for almost 30 years. Uh, he passed away in uh, 2020, where I know he would be on Midway every single day. Um, but, uh, and I'll talk more about my dad in a minute. Next slide, please. Uh, so that's my dad in the upper left. So after his squadron command, uh, we came here to Coronado. And he was the operations officer on the USS Bonham Richard. And I do remember standing out there on the pier in North Island, watching him come back. And all the officers were up in the island waiting, and they all looked exactly alike. <laughs> so I wave at one for a little while, then I look at another one for a little while. Then I realize, oh, my dad smiled, his ears stuck out. 
So I learned how to pick them out there. <laughs> Flash forward 30 years, uh, and I got to command the USS Ronald Reagan here in uh, here in San Diego. We lived in Quarters Q on uh, North Island. Everybody thought our house, our base house, was the BOQ where they could check in and stay. And that happened pretty often that people would try to check into our house. And that, especially when I was out at sea, that gave Mary, my wife, a little bit of a, and the kids a little bit of a start. When we moved from Virginia to Coronado, I told my kids, this is the best place you'll ever live as a kid. I lived in Coronado in fifth and sixth grade. They were middle schoolers going into high school. And then we were coming from Virginia. Of course, they didn't believe me because they never believed dad, but they loved Coronado. My daughter was in high school. She loved it maybe a little too much, but they had a great time there. Our kids both came back to California for college. Daughter went to USD and her son went to Cal Poly. So. Yeah, next slide. So this looks weird on your computer. So you can't see uh, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the things here, but basically this is uh, Midway coming over from Coronado uh, in uh, 2004. Uh, you may remember that in January, that's when they pushed the Midway from Coronado over to the Navy Pier. This is a little before and after uh, of the island up top and what it looks like right now. Yeah. Next slide. Color. Just not showing up very well. So we are a San Diego icon and treasure here. And uh, we get visitors from around the globe. Um, we, you know, 80% of our visitors from Midway are, are visiting San Diego. But one of my efforts as the new CEO when I took over last year was to get more of a community you can, uh, uh, feel for Midway and more of the community. I wonder if one example is we go to Top Gun night uh, every year, where we show Top Gun in flight deck. Now, you can rent the movie, uh, or you can uh, stream the movie, but we sell out in three hours, and we fill the flight deck uh, with people from uh, people from the community. Uh, one thing we started doing this year, I don't know if anybody was able to come over to Jingle Jets on Midway. Yeah, you could see it from here, so you might have been curious as to what the heck was going on over there on the Midway. Uh, we decided we visited the USS Wisconsin last year, and they they decorate up the uh, their battleship museum. Uh, hey, that's cool. Uh, they decorate their battleship museum with all kinds of lights. So we decided to do it. We had to staff it up carefully. We didn't know when we plugged it in to our 79 year old ship that the ship would just blow up. Didn't happen. We had Santa Claus in the hangar bay sitting on an ejection seat in a flight suit. That's worth thinking. And uh, it was he was very popular. We thought we'd do about 13,000 people. I didn't expect to break even the first year. We had over 20,000 people. Over 70% were locals. Um, do you know what our number one uh, year, our number one week for visitors is on uh, Midway of the whole year? You know, the summer is our busiest season, but our number one week is between Christmas and New Year. I, I forgot to say, there's going to be a quiz at the end of this. So. <laughs> Be ready because I have prizes. Um, it's between Christmas and New Year's. And I think both those people say, hey, Christmas is over. What are we going to do? Let's go over to Midway. We also looked at the Embarcadero area, and there really was not much going on down there. And we wanted to build a new family tradition on the Embarcadero. And I think we're able to do that with Jingle Jets. And again, connect better with our community. We do over 200 uh, events, corporate events a year on board Midway. 20% of our revenue actually comes from these evening events. So your company, uh, I'm sure many of you have been to events on Midway. We stole the event coordinator from the zoo, Cheryl Carlson, about three years ago, and she's the best. So people love to do events on Midway. We're happy to support that. We also do uh, over 300 uh, military events. So we do a lot of changes of command, uh, retirements, promotions, and we love that. Because that adds the real authenticity of Midway, I think. You know, when we do ceremonies, especially when we're open as a museum, we'll do the ceremony in a different area. We'll just kind of cordon it off. And our visitors come by and they see these ceremonies going on and they're blown away. And we get so many comments like, I heard this Master Chief talking about his 30 years in the Navy, you know, and the bells and the whistles. And uh, it makes a big impression on our visitors. You know, we're the number one trip advisor attraction in San Diego. We do over 40 visitors a year. We're the number one ship museum in the world. And, you know, when our visitors come aboard, and I'll talk about our volunteers, but a lot of the time, 
I'll mention, I met an actual veteran on board, didn't we? You know, we take it for granted here. You know, there's all these old retired animals just hanging around. All the time. <laughs> but uh, for a lot of America, they don't get that kind of exposure. And so to be able to walk on an aircraft carrier, even an older one, some people walk up and they think we're an active duty carrier, which is fun. Um, people ask me, um, remember that hurricane that came through? You know, maxed out at 20 knots. <laughs> Some people ask me, hey, are you going to get underway on Midway? And I said, no, we're going to ride it out. <laughs> and we did find that. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, another part of the way we connect to the community is our education program. So uh, years ago, uh, Mac and the founders decided that we wanted to get outside the hall on Midway. And we do that through our educational program. Uh, we have over 40,000 kids a year, K through 12, from every school district in San Diego, come aboard Midway for learning. It's mostly focused on STEM. We have great labs. We have great qualified teacher instructors. But at, once they're done in the classroom, we walk them around Midway, and they learn about teamwork and service and sacrifice, things that, we, you know, that they may not get in their public school. You know, we'll take them down to the Messex, and, and we'll say, hey, here's where... Here's where these satyrs cook 12,000 meals for their shipmates every single day. Um, and uh, and they learn that, well, okay, these guys are just as important as the people that fly the planes up in the flight deck, because unless there's a team, nothing gets done. So we love having kids aboard for school. Uh, they also uh, do overnights on board. They get We stack them three high, and they get to experience all of that. One of our educational gals, she's pretty new, she said, hey, Harry, you should try spending a night in the Midway sometime. I said, I'm good. <laughs> and I, we got that trip in the morning. Exactly. Uh, we have a foundation, uh, but it's the opposite of most foundations because our Midway Foundation, that the money for the foundation comes from the museum, and then they provide Rules of Freedom grants to veteran-oriented nonprofits all throughout the nation, uh, but especially focusing on San Diego. So uh, that's our foundation. They also form the core of our capital group, campaign group, who's raising money for Freedom Park, which will be the largest veterans park on the West Coast. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, we are editing as we go. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> So, these are the stars of Midway. I know we have several docents here today, our volunteers. We actually have over 800 volunteers that make Midway go every day. They're the ship's crew. People ask me, well, what, what, how do you become the number one ship museum? How do you get so many visitors? How are you so successful? It's A, our location, but mainly it's our volunteers. People that, and by the way, I have volunteer applications with me today <laughs> for anyone who would like to join our team. Um, but when I think about longevity, uh, what keeps you going, right? It's three things, and everybody here demonstrates this. It's mobility, right? It's moving. It's getting going. Well, these, these volunteers climb all over the ship. They're everywhere. Uh, the second part is socialization. You've never met a more social group than Midway volunteers. I know where all their happy hours are. It depends on the day of the week. They pick a different spot every day. I know where they are. Uh, they bring a lot of baked goods in, too. Uh, and they give me a lot of advice, of course. <laughs> because of the third part, because of dedication to something bigger than you. And they are totally dedicated to Midway. They're totally dedicated to our success. And oh, by the way, they own the ship. I mean, we're, you know, our staff, we have 200 on staff, but we're not there on the weekends except for janitorial. We turn it over to the volunteers. If I go in, if I go in for a weekend event, they kind of look at me like, well, what are you doing here? You checking up on us? Um, uh, they're great. And uh, and they make Midway come to life and they make the guest experience what it is. A lot of museums you go are heads down experiences. You're gonna be reading things and looking at things. Midway's a heads up experience. You're gonna run into a volunteer and they're gonna tell you uh, where to go and what to do. And uh, they'll tell you sea stories, and some of them are even true. <laughs> but we pride ourselves on being the biggest adult daycare center in the city. Next slide. 
as a museum, you can't be stagnant. You've got to be changing. You've got to be developing new things. For the first time in eight years, we're going to open up a new exhibit on board Midland. It's down near our engineering spaces. We're going to tell people, and you'll like this, who was the first Chang on Reagan, by the way, my old ship. It's going to tell the story of Navy engineers, uh, what they did, the different ratings. Most things on Midway, uh, you know, are like, hey, walk up and see what it used to look like. This is going to be completely different because we, we hired a company to help us design this and make it interactive and make it a learning experience. So we're going to take people through the steam cycle first. Then they're going to go see like light table racks, old Navy racks who turn into light tables. They're going to talk about all the different ratings that made Midway go back in the day. Then they're going to walk over and, and they're going to be in this birthing. They're going to walk over and see the machinery rewind shop, which of course is right in the middle of birthing because why not? Yeah. And they're going to see that. And then we're going to take them into a, a damage control locker. Well, they're going to see some of the gear that sailors use to fight fires. They're going to learn that every sailor is a firefighter. And they're going to hear an alarm and they're going to go into a room and there's going to be an actual carrier fire. Now, we've had to work with the company that's designing this to make it not too terrifying, uh, but an experience of what it's like to see a fire in a very small space. And then we're going to talk about some of the, the larger carrier fires and how these sailors sacrifice and save their ships. Uh, I think it's really going to be cool. We're going to open that up around Memorial Day this year, and we're excited about that. And then we've got another exhibit open up the next year. We've already opened more parts of a museum ship than any other Navy museum ship has ever done. And we're going to keep doing that because we have to keep changing and upgrading. As I said, we're celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. So there's all kinds of 20th anniversary events that are going to be going on throughout the year. We took the lead on the San Diego Veterans Day Parade last year. It languished for three years, so we took it over. Um, we were hoping for about 60 participating units. We got over 90. And we had over 10,000 people that attend the parade right down harbor. We had to move it to November 12th uh, because the city had some, so they, they changed it on us because, of course, we got some cruise ships coming in, et cetera. We've got a commitment now from the mayor and the port that it's going to be on November 11th, the actual Veterans Day, from here on out. So this year, it's on November 11th. Come on down. Uh, it's a good time. Then come on midway and hang out after that. Uh, next slide, please. So I talked a little bit, a little bit about Jingle Jets, and I love this picture down in the lower right. Uh, that's midway all lit up that you can see from Coronado. Um, as I said, uh, it was it, it was the best spot to watch the parade of lights. Maybe some of you were taking your boats through there. We were up above uh, having a cocktail, waving down at you. Um, as I said, we got people from all over uh, uh, visiting Midway for Jingle Jets, and it was uh, just a great success. And we're gonna do it again. They already got, they want to add a lot more lights and other stuff. Next slide. Talk about the Veterans Day Parade. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And we're going to do it again uh, this year. Next slide. So this is our 20th anniversary slide. Um, and these, this is the logo and these are the banners. Uh, that are now up in the parking lot um, to celebrate Midway. Midway was commissioned what year? Anybody know? 1945. It was commissioned a week after World War II. Um, and it was built in only 17 months. And and what I, I pulled the string on this because it's Women's Month. 70% of the workers that built Midway were women. Yeah. I think that's probably why the ship is still around. <laughs> Right. Well done. <laughs> uh, anyway, next slide, please. So this is uh, this is our new damage control exhibit. These are some things you're going to see here. These are the light tables with uh, some of the different gear that people are going to see. They're going to learn about steam cycle, and this is a kind of a version of what they're going what's going to happen when they go into the space that has the fire. It's multi-sensory. Uh, we've hired a great, a great group, a great company that's building this for us and have done a lot of these things. Next slide. So this is the Navy Pier Transformation. So 20 years ago, and I would like, yeah, we will get the, the verbiage up, but 
20 years ago when we came here, we promised the city and the port that someday we would turn the pier uh, into a veterans park. And now uh, it's taken about 19 years for the city to do their part, but they did. They uh, spent about $13 million to reinforce all the pilings along the pier here. And that part was finished last year. This month, we're gonna break ground on the demolition phase where this ugly building 11 is going away. Wow. Thank God. Uh, on the 25th of April uh, is going to be the official opening ceremony. We're going to have the mayor there, Congressman Scott Peters, who was a former port commissioner. I know we were talking about him earlier. Uh, he wants to be there. He's gotten us a, a $2 million of federal money towards the, towards the Freedom Park project. And we're going to take this down. That's going to take about a year. But I can't wait for the building to come down because then people are going to see Midway in all her glory on the starboard side. And our starboard side is going to be beautiful by the end of this summer. And uh, and this is where we're going. Um, so let's go to the next slide. I think I got a better shot. No, nope, go back. Sorry. Um, this, where the building used to be, is going to be a parade ground. So John William Finn was the first Medal of Honor winner uh, from San Diego. He won a Medal of Honor during Pearl Harbor. Enlisted man, he's going to be our tribute in our parade ground. And then there's going to be the parking is going to be a parking lot for about 100, and then down on the end is an American flag. Uh, the, the, the tallest flagpole the FAA would let us do is 100 feet. So we're doing a 100 foot flagpole with a 40 by 60 flag. It's going to be something, it's going to be navigational aid as you're coming in. I could have used that. Uh, Reagan might have actually been on center on it. Um, so that's going to be cool with the park down at the end. There's going to be a tribute to Barbara Cox. Barbara Cox was the sponsor of the USS Midway, Cox Communications, you may recognize the name. She was a 22-year-old widow that commissioned the Midway. Her husband had already died in World War II, he was an aviator. So we love that. And kind of a family, uh, a family monument, families uh, waving farewell or hello to ships as they come in. And along the right side of the pier, as you walk down, is gonna be an interactive, uh, set of seven different interactive kiosks from Tell the Story of our veterans, of service, of sacrifice. The Padres want one. They want to tell the story of a linkage between baseball and military uh, with, uh, uh, with Jerry Coleman, Ted Williams, et cetera. So we said, hey, that's fine. We'll, we'll make a deal. What's in it for us? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got some tickets up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so that's going to be Freedom Park. It's going to be the largest park on the West Coast. Wow. And part of the agreement that we made with uh, uh, that we made with the city um, and, and, and the Coastal Commission, more importantly, is it's got to be completed in five years. So the Coastal Commission formally approved it February of last year, the unanimous vote from Coastal, which was only five years in making. Yeah. And then uh, we have five years to get it done. So by February 28th, this park's going to be done. Uh, I get a lot of questions about, I get two big questions. Okay, what about parking? It's all about parking, as I've learned in this case. So across the street, if you've noticed the IQHQ construction, uh, there's a, uh, most of it's gonna be biotech, there's also an event center, that's opening this spring. Also, 2,200 parking spaces are gonna be available underground. Uh, they're gonna be run by Ace Parking. Now, I wasn't born yesterday, so I, I found Keith Jones, he was the grandson of our first chairman, Malin Burnham, and I convinced him to jo join our foundation board. So now we have Keith. Head of Ace Parking. You always want the parking. <laughs> 2,200 spaces across the street. Also, 250 new surface uh, surface lots going up across the street as well. So, plenty of parking. Um, so that's one question. Another question is, well, how do you how are you going to keep this park from turning into a campground? Well, we're going to maintain 50% of the maintenance with Midway because not that we don't trust our friends at the port; they're great to work with. But we want to make sure this park stays nice and safe and everything else. So we're going to take over 50% of the maintenance for that and maintain it and keep it looking nice. The other thing you can't see here is we're going to build a whole new entry experience in the Midway. Um, I, I got inspired to visit the Nixon Museum up in Rural and I love the entry uh, into that museum. So that's what it's going to, we're going to kind of do an atrium like that. We're going to spend a, we're going to spend a Hornet, of course, Bob's old plane. 
from above, inside, and have a ticket counter inside. It's going to be a very nice experience. It's going to have a viewing deck halfway up where you can look out on the bay. So uh, that's going to be really nice, too. We're going to build all this in as we build Freedom Park. But it's not cheap. Next slide. Uh, as I said, the port has spent the money to do the pre-development work uh, to fix the pilings. Uh, the U.S. Midway Museum is putting up $15 million for this demolition phase. And then we've got to raise about $35 million after that through corporate donations. Our capital campaign committee is led by Jack McGrory, who helped build uh, Snapdragon Ready Shell. Uh, he's amazing. They're all amazing. And they are working very hard to do the next thing of the fundraiser for Freedom Park. There's a small collection jar outside, and as you're coming way out, that out there. Thank you. Um, but uh, so we're actively engaged in the fundraising part of Freedom Park. But when it's all done, we hand it over to the Port San Diego. It's it's a community park. Um, I want this to be what somebody might do as a case study someday in a public-private partnership. And it starts with face-to-face -face meetings. So we have built office spaces on the Midway for all our meetings. We meet with the Port of San Diego every two weeks. Now they've named the contractor for the demo phase. We said, hey, welcome to new office spaces right here on Midway, where if there's a problem, I'm just going to walk upstairs and we'll talk about it. So uh, so that's how we're going to work. It. And a good public-private partnership starts with the face-to-face -face piece. And that's very important to me. So I've made a lot of new friends at the Port of San Diego. And they actually, they've actually been very good teammates as we step out on this. They want this to succeed. This is a huge signature project. And I really believe it's going to change the Embarcadero. It's going to make it a place where people want to go and they want to be and they want to walk around. Mac told me that 20 years ago, that area was a sailor's only zone. And it's not that way anymore. And, and it's going to continue to change. And the one thing I've learned in this job is there's a ton of people in San Diego and here in Coronado that just want to make this a better place to live for them, their kids, and the kids' kids. And I love working with those kind of people. And it's been a real eye-opener and a learning experience for me as an old Navy guy um, to, to learn about politics and, and people who just want to make it better than we do. Next slide. That's our beautiful ship celebrating 20 years. And uh, I'm ready for any questions. I have one. Thank you. Yes, sir. And then we'll do the uh, Can I ask you about parking? <laughs> yeah, well, Grab again. I, I understand that you're going to find places for cars to go, like you do. But for the safety of the pedestrians that are across the street and parking, has there been any uh, thought about an overhead architectural passenger? transporting bridge like the one that comes across the Metro Park. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, wow. I'll tell you, uh, for one thing, our volunteers will keep most of their spaces because that's inside our leasehold right up against the ship. So we'll have about 41 volunteer spaces still for our volunteers who want to park close to the ship. We asked the port to do a traffic study uh, and how people would get across that street. And I thought, I thought your idea was pretty good. They did a traffic study and said the traffic doesn't warrant that. However, they're putting in enhanced crosswalks and also their stoplights that are going to help people get across. Um, but they, they didn't they didn't want to do the bridge over. Now, one of our um, original board members suggested that we run a zip line <laughs> from one of the buildings across the street to go all the way down to the landing area. I took that. And I, I said, I, I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> Can we volunteer this to do that? I would. I'm sure Wayne's got a good question. I do, I think. Uh, uh, in 65, I was uh, part of the strike force with the midway of Vietnam. I was on the gallows in the this prison. But uh, this is not about me. So I wanted, I wanted to tell um, you about my experience yesterday. I visited for the first time on my bike over there to the uh, Midway Repair Facility on North Island. And I was just amazed at how they repair all these um, aircraft and different things for the Midway. So they're part of the unsung heroes. And we have a lot of docents, and uh, I actually was a Red Hat volunteer for a little while. 
but uh, a lot of docents and volunteers here. So I want to thank all of them for all their service. Thank you, Emma. So I should definitely mention that we have a hangar over in North Island since, it, since before we opened that refurbishes, restores our aircraft. And most of our aircraft come from the Naval Aviation Museum in various states, and our volunteers do the work in the hangar. If you're on North Island, stop on by. There's an A1 uh, Sky Raider in there right now, Spad is being. Admiral, can you tell us about the connection with Lawrence Chambers? And you probably can, but we're going to have to wait until we get that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to introduce you to Terry, who's going to join your club. <laughs> right. Now, Janet, Terry, I want to thank you so much for coming to join us today. It's a real you know, Midway fan, most of us uh, have, have some affiliation with the as well. So it's not it's not much, but this is our, our four-way test uh, rotary coin, and it's, uh, it's our yeah. international motto. So thanks again for joining us. All right. Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what, team, we are uh, just about to ring the bell. I've been, I have one uh, real quick closing announcement here. We do have another Peacemaker Award that uh, that we've got from last year for Limbs of Freedom, and we're, we're going to actually present this to the Limbs of Freedom when we go down to Ensenada in April. So, uh, Luann and I and and uh, DG Don will be down there, and that will be part of our Rotarians at Work Day uh, festivities. Next week, we are at the Coronado Cays Yacht Club, and we are going to hear from Steve Morris, who will be talking to us about protecting San Diego Bay and the environment. And with that, I adjourn this meeting of the Coronado Rotary Club and wish you a great Rotary Week service above self. You <laughs> <laughs>